So thank you for joining me, you guys. Um, I am gonna share uh, a couple of video making tips and tricks with you all. I'm not sure if you guys had a chance to check out my videos yet, but I um, post one video a week onto uh, Facebook, my personal, uh, excuse me, my business Facebook page and also my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not um, a professional video maker or editor or anything like that, and I'm not delusional enough to think that I am, but I just find it to be a really helpful tool. And so at any point, if I'm too loud or going too fast or too slow, please let me know. Uh, and I anticipate we can kind of wrap this up in uh, half an hour or so. So guys, in and out of here pretty quick. So, um, like I said, this video, uh, this presentation is kind of for some best practice and tips on video recording and just video uh, generating. And so my goal when I put out video is to stay in touch with my sphere of influence. I find videos to be really helpful and attention grabbing to be like front and center when I'm doing social media uh, posts. It also helps me generate a lot of content for social media because I not only use the uh, video once, but I also um, use the video thumbnail for um, my Instagram. I kind of promote it in other ways. And so just by me doing one post, it kind of have a lot of um, surrounding things that allows me to keep boosting out. It also allows me, my sphere to know that I'm still in business and it's just a way for me to just kind of amp up my presence beyond the typical, you know, like real estate funny post, like a meme or, you know, the just sold uh, or, or in contract type of post um, on your typical um, social media uh, avenues. And I mean, by the way, I do all of those too, but I just help, I just find uh, videos to be a great way to engage and stay top of mind. Um, okay, so I put this in here because I want to let you guys know that the videos are actually quite time consuming. Um, a three to five minute video on average costs me about four hours on average from beginning to end. And beginning meaning me sitting down, brainstorming, writing the content, shooting the video, editing, uploading it, and then promoting it on um, social media. So on average, every week, it costs me about four hours. And that's me having done this process quite a couple of times already. So in the beginning, when you're setting up, you probably are looking at doubling up the time until later on, once everything gets a little more streamlined, you just still should budget uh, half a day to do this. Uh, it's also really hard to measure any tangible outcome. Um, honestly, I haven't had anybody directly reach out to me because of my videos yet. It's obviously not a marketing strategy where it's dollar in, dollar out, and I can really track my expenses and income. It's going to be a little bit more intangible, but I did have somebody from an extended sphere uh, reach out and ask me to put in contact with a lender. And so I, I, like I said, I think it's just really helpful to engage with everybody. Um, but haven't had anybody directly knocking on my door yet. So, um, this is as with everything else, um, we need a business plan a marketing plan. And this is kind of my overarching um, architect on how I approach video making. Um, when I set up the videos, my goal really is to be consistent. And so I try to put one video out per week and my goal is to do one video per week uh, in the year 2020. So hopefully by the end of this year, I'll have 52 videos. Also, um, I try to have a theme 
um, the question I ask myself is, what's my personal brand? Um, and so I personally picked first time home buyers and investment properties as kind of my focus, just because that's the demographic I can kind of relate to the most. But for every one of you guys, then you can really choose different niches. You know, it can be home designs, home staging, selling tips and tricks. And so, um, it will be it will be fun and it will be cool to see what you guys come up with um and also of course another piece it can be personal aspects you know maybe every three four videos you do you can post one about how you're cooking at home or just um, you know a little more content besides business 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 to show your audience that you are actually blood and flesh and a human being too um and lastly i put in here to let my I try to let my video improve over time. I know that it probably is not very obvious because I only had, you know, 10 or to 12 videos so far this year. And so it doesn't seem like there's any big jump, but then I will tell you that I've been experimenting with different uh, video equipment and my content formatting has been changing a little bit. So let it pivot, let it change, let it improve. And I think at some point, I may evolve into some sort of video uh, that becomes an interview or maybe a video that becomes a lifestyle, a day in the life of a realtor type of thing. So I, I don't know what it will be like yet, but then I imagine it will change up at some point. Um, any questions so far? Uh, what kind of what microphone, kind of microphone do, you do you use? Oh, oh um, actually, I, I get my microphone on uh, Amazon. It depends on what type of uh, phones you have. Oh, and by the way, I feel like I should also put a disclaimer that I shoot on my videos on my cell phone. You know, I have an iPhone and I don't have any fancy, you know, cameras or anything like that. So Laura, I, I'm going to go ahead and touch base on the microphone part in a little bit. Uh, Sounds good. Say a little bit more about that. Okay. <clears throat> so now we talked about the overarching architect of my uh, business plan when it comes to video marketing. Um, the content, I try to follow more or less a, um, a format as well. And so you have an introduction. When we give a presentation, we do the tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you told them, right? And so introduction, um, it's going to be a hook. People usually only have about 15 seconds to grab somebody's attention when it comes to um, video watching. And so you really want to make sure in the beginning of your video, you have something to hook people in so that they continue watching the rest of the video. You also don't want your entire video to be too long. Uh, I, I find two to five minutes to be really the sweet spot. Um, anything longer than that, you start to lose um, people's attention. And if it's, you know, like I said, five minutes more, then people tend to skip um, the middle part of your video anyway. And so just make sure that you don't go too long. Um, okay, so now you have introduction to help people in. I have a kind of a tagline. Um, my tagline is empowering individuals and families with financial success through real estate. That's kind of my motto, if you would. And so beyond that, I also introduce myself because you may be doing your 20th video, but it may be the first time somebody comes sees you. And so you want to make sure that you throw in there uh, who you are, what you're doing, you're with Line Real Estate, stuff like that. Sometimes I try to engage my audience as well. I'm still playing around with this idea a little bit because I may do a, a question or a poll and I'll say, this is what I'll be talking about. Hey, by the way, what's some of the best staging ideas you've come across? Comments below. So I try to engage people. Um, I've had mixed success, so I think really depends on the topic you're going to be talking about. 
but I'm still playing around with that idea a little bit. Third is gonna be the item of value. Um, I told you what I'm about to tell you, and now I'm gonna tell you. And lastly, your call to action. So that gonna, that's going to be um, different, depends on what your goals are. My goal is to tell them, hey, be engaged with me. So please subscribe, see my future videos. Also, reach out to me if you have any questions or just wanna chat. And so I have a call to action at the end to really try to get people to um, engage with me. And so I kind of go through my entire um, video content through this format, and I actually write out the entire script first. And so an example would be like, hello audience, I wanna share with you about the importance of staging your home before launching on the market. That's my introduction. I'm Danny Lau with Mind Real Estate. I'm here to empower individuals and families with financial success through real estate. That's my tagline. You should stage your house for the following reasons, because it really helps potential buyers visualize the space, because it really helps the videos and the photos look more amazing. So that's the item of value. Focus on educating your audience. And lastly, the, hope, the call to action is, if you enjoy my video, please subscribe. Um, and like I said, you know, my video really is a content a heavy or content focused video. So I find this formula to be really helpful. If you have a different types of video, maybe like I said, a day in the life, you may have something completely different than this. Any questions, comments? Okay, I'm gonna move on. Okay, so the logistics of the shoot. Um, Laura was asking about the microphone earlier. I actually have to find it on Amazon. I'm trying to find uh, the, the, the order that I purchased, but it's nothing expensive. It's about a $15 purchase and it's a clip on microphone. And so when you purchase it, there is, um, it actually should depend on what type of phone you have because the newer iPhones, they don't have the um, microphone jack anymore. And so you can just kind of plug in like the older versions. And so now you need a uh, microphone from Amazon and an adapter that gives you the um, new iPhone charging and then, do you guys know what I'm talking about? The one that kind of adapts. So you kind of need two components if you have a new iPhone. And I can't really speak to Samsung or, or any other um, models, but um, I can find what I purchased and kind of share it with you guys. But I would definitely try avoiding using uh, the built-in microphone from your uh, iPhone because now all of a sudden you get a lot more echo if you're indoors or you get a lot more um, exterior uh, background noise if you're on the outside, like a car driving by and you hear it. Um, besides the microphone, I also use a teleprompter app. And like I said, I kind of write out the entire script ahead of time. And so I download my entire script onto my iPhone so that I know what I'm going to say as I'm reading, looking into the camera. And so the um, teleprompter app is super helpful. And I also kind of try to um, rehearse before I actually sh shoot it so I can speed up or slow down the conversation based on what, how much um, content I packed into uh, the clip. Um, lighting is also very important. Um, obviously, Laura, you got the ring light. I think that's a cool, amazing tool. Uh, the only thing I would say is when you use a ring light, be mindful. Nothing is reflective behind you. If it's really reflective, then you all of a sudden see a giant ring behind you. And if, it's, if you're too close, 
Then all of a sudden, your eyeballs, you can see two rings in there, and it looks kind of odd. So there's a depth thing going on, and you want to play around with it to make it look as natural as possible. Um, lighting is important indoors and outdoors. Indoors, obviously, a lion has to be with the um, ring lights. But if it's outdoors, you want to make sure your face is not in the shade. Um, so just be mindful of that. And so um, that's a couple of things on the lighting. Um, you also want to make sure that your phone has enough space. I um, have ran out of space on my phone before. And when you're re uh, recording a video clip, sometimes it's really big and you do really don't want the video to just cut halfway short if you're on a hot streak. Um, because you're out of space. So you want to budget enough um, capacity on your phone before you go ahead and record. Okay, so now we've got the content, we got the shooting, so we got the clips, and it comes down to editing. Um, frankly, you're probably better served if you check out a um, YouTube video on how to best edit your videos. But I find success and uh, it's helpful for me to use the iMovie application on my Mac. I um, haven't really used any other video editing tools yet. Um, and I'm not sure what's offered on PC, but um, iMovie is pretty intuitive. Um, I just kind of download all my clips onto iMovie, trim off all the extra stuff, the um, parts where I stuttered or stuff like that, and kind of streamline everything up. Um, and so um, I also throw my name, kind of appears in the bottom of the screen when I edit my video. Um, of course, I download my clips from my phone to my computer um, with AirDrop to edit on my computer because that's a little easier. And I also um, okay, I lost track. I, I lost track of my thoughts. Sorry. So anyway, I use Canva to create a thumbnail. I think that's quite important because when you upload a video onto YouTube or Facebook, if you don't pick a thumbnail for the video, the um, system will pick one for you and it will be a random shot in the middle of the clip and you could be having your eyes closed, your mouth open. So you really don't want that. Oh, um, got it. And so the thumbnail is when it's like, the preview mode, right? And so actually, I should go back one slide. You see some of the thumbnails I did. Um, it's nothing amazing, but then it just gives it a more clean look. And I use canva.com because it's inexpensive. It's actually free, not inexpensive. And it's just really intuitive to use. And so I kind of just throw, throw them in there. I take a picture when I'm doing the shoot. And so afterwards, I can use that picture and put it as the thumbnail. Okay. Any questions? No, that's really cool. I had no idea that that's how you, because I know whenever I shoot a video on BombBomb, Bomb, whenever it goes out to you guys, I didn't know how they chose to present that particular picture at that time. And yeah. it's, it's just random I does it. I have never used BombBomb Bomb yet, but I don't know if BombBomb Bomb gives you a, a choice to put thumbnails. I'm not sure, but if, if you do, then it would probably be really helpful. Is it okay if I plug um, that we are going to have a couple of different Canva trainings for agents coming up soon? So we'll actually have two. We'll have one that Ashley teaches, and then we'll have one that marketing teaches. So we get everybody prepped and I'll talk more about that later, but um, just to, you know, help support what you're saying. Yeah, totally. you have Canva, yeah. Canva is just an incredible tool, especially given that it's free. And so 
I, I like using that a lot because a lot of the things have templates built in already and it just gives it a lot more clean and professional look, even if I'm not a professional. Um, okay, so um, that we kind of put all the logistics of filming the video and editing aside. And this is the part where I want to talk about setting up my channels. Um, I set up my channels with kind of two, three things. There is my YouTube channel and I actually set up a Facebook business page where I upload videos separately from my YouTube channel. The reason why I do that is because Facebook actually don't play in the same sandbox with YouTube. They have uh, some sort of competition going on where Facebook does not automatically play YouTube videos. And so when I see somebody just kind of share a YouTube video on their Facebook, it only shows up as a link and it does not automatically play the video by itself. Whereas if you, if you upload your video to Facebook by itself, then Facebook, once you scroll through it, it automatically starts playing and it kind of captures people's attention immediately. Um, and another note on Facebook, when you upload it, you want to put um, captions on there as well. Because a lot of times when people look through Facebook, they actually don't scroll through Facebook with the volume on. And so if I'm just talking into the camera and my mouth is moving and there's no volume, people are just going to scroll right by. And so if you have captions, it really helps people to at least read the first 15 seconds. If they want to choose keep scrolling, then you didn't catch their attention. But then if they stay, it's because you have captions lined up. And so, um, Facebook does one thing really cool, which is they automatically generate the um, caption for you. So they listen to all the content and they kind of just type everything out, right? Um, it's kind of accurate, kind of not. So I automatically generate all the captions on Facebook videos and then I go back in to edit it before I launch it. So it's a little bit time consuming on that part too, but I, I think if I'm gonna do it, I wanna do it well. Um, so you have YouTube, you have Facebook, and the last part is, I put it in here, um, I actually upload my scripts and articles onto medium.com as some sort of a blog. Um, honestly, I don't do a lot of things with that block. Um, it just kind of houses all my um, video scripts on there. I just kind of figured if I already did it, why not? I haven't really figured out um, how to generate more traffic on my block yet. But if anybody has any good ideas, feel free to share them with me. I would love it. But um, like I said, I just kind of put it on medium.com if Sometimes I want to reference something. I kind of link it back to that article. I already uploaded so people can see it. Okay. The last couple of things is just some best practices and tips and tricks. I talk into my phone and use the voice um, recording button because once you talk into your notes, it kind of types for you. And so I would actually talk out my entire script and then I download my script onto my computer and then edit it with a word document instead of typing it up up front. Um, so I find that to be a little less time consuming. The video description is super important. Um, it helps your search ability of your video. So in the video description, you kind of want to put the, you can see on the left side, you know, key points. Um, you want to put your um, contact information as well if 
that is the call to action that you are trying to go for. And so um, video descriptions, really helpful for people to find out what you're gonna talk about. Use captions on Facebook. We kind of talked about that already. And last but not least, be SEO friendly. SEO is uh, search engine optimization. There's two sites I use that is pretty helpful. One is neilpatel.com. I can share that with you guys in a second, neilpatel.com. Uh, the other one is uh, Google AdWords. And so what I do is that when I come up with a content and have um, an article in my head that I'm ready to talk about, you want to make sure that it's searchable and you have the best opportunity to get organic traffic. And so SEO is really helpful when it comes to that. For example, if you're trying to talk about Davis real estate market, now all of a sudden I will play around with Davis property market or Davis real estate market or real estate Davis housing market. Or should I talk about YOLO housing market, YOLO property market, YOLO real estate market? You kind of play around with different words and phrases to make sure that the um, title and the description is serving you best and makes it much more discoverable when somebody's organically searching for a topic that's related to what you're talking about. And that's it. You guys, please subscribe to my channel because it really helps to have a um, community. If um, you guys want to check out some of the things that I've done in the past, then you, uh, I hope this can be served as some sort of um, you know, idea picking and you can see what you like and what you don't like, what I've done well, what you think is not done as well, then you can pick and choose from. So subscribe to my channel. I love to get some feedback from you guys. And that's all I've got. Do you guys have any questions? Uh, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention to you in terms of uh, search op optimization for your, um, uh, what did you call it? Your, your, yes, blog, yeah. your blog. Um, yeah. <clears throat> we had a really, some really great speakers a couple of years ago at MarTech. One of the, one of the big events Lion puts on every year Call Kathy Harrington. I can also email you and Kathy and, and hook you into each other if you like, but she should have some good suggestions for you for, um, ways that you can um, help get your blog out there more. Okay. Well, like I said, you know, the blog is really a regurgitation of my blog. So I, I, yeah, I think it's just for me to have some place to house because I want to push the video part out more than I want to push the Got it. Write, written content out. Amanda had a question about how much space you need on your phone to shoot the video. I say my last video after I um, finished editing the whole thing was about 500 megabytes, but I think that's probably on the big side. So um, I think if you have at least a hundred megabytes to 200 megabytes, you should be okay. Just shoot the video and then download onto your phone, uh, excuse me, download onto your computer and then delete the video off your phone later. Okay. Hey, Danny, do you use a, a tripod? I noticed that you were at the farmer's market in one of your videos. Do you have your phone connected to a tripod? I do. So um, I don't know what the setup is for the um, ring and all the equipment that you bought, Laura, but um, mine comes with a tripod on the bottom and a ring light on top where it holds my uh, camera slash cell phone. Um, and so I even use it and take that out uh, with me when um, I'm not using the light in particular, just because it kind of holds everything in place and it's super convenient.
Any other questions? Um, well, anybody else? Well, I hope you guys find this helpful. Um, and I look forward to seeing what you guys will be uploading. It'll be fun. Yikes. Um, I, this has been fantastic. What, what amazing information. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me the opportunity, Laura. I'm, I'm more than happy to do this. Yeah, this has really, really been a, a, a gift. So thank you, Danny. My pleasure. Um, I'm going to hit you up in a minute and um, just kind of, if you don't mind, I'll give you a call directly. Okay. I just want to talk to you about equipment and any recommendations you might cool. have. Okay, thank you for joining us, guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Good afternoon. Bye.